Finally, after all these years, I've finally found it. The Clipboard of Truth. Breaking news! A new episode of Let's Be Frank starting now! Hello all! It's been a little while since we last did a Weird and Wild Creatures video. Sorry about that. It hasn't been because I wanted to wait so long. I just had so many great and other ideas I wanted to do. I know I did two cooking videos in a row, and that probably wasn't received super well, but they were both really good cooking videos. And if you're watching this video and you have not watched the two that have come before it, why don't you go watch those two right after this one? But let's stop focusing on the past and focus on the present instead. And let's talk about some creatures. Uh, got some good ones for you today. As you saw in the video title, I made another assumption about Typhon and his family. I thought I talked about the entire family. Again, I was wrong. He has a fifth kid. I googled it. I think that's his last. I mean, I think Wikipedia says he has like tongues, but like at least within the weird and wild creatures cards, I am like 99% sure this is his last kid. So we'll wait till the end to talk about him and his confusing place in the family tree. But let's start where we always do in the monsters of the past. Our monster of the past is another very fearsome dinosaur. It's the Baryonyx. Just look at those jaws. Very long. Do they remind... I hope I'm right where he is. Do they remind you of anything? This dinosaur had the jaws of a crocodile and the hunting ability of a bear. That's the kind of intelligence it had. Now, I know bears aren't too smart unless you're counting Yogi Bear. But for a dinosaur with, you know, walnut-sized brain, having the hunting abilities of a bear it ain't too bad. You're already starting off at a, at a further uh, uh, starting line than a lot of the other dinosaurs are. This terrifying beast had 128 knife-like teeth lining its entire mouth. So whatever it dug its fangs into, it was going to kill in one chunk. But honestly, are fish really that hard to kill? Because that is what the Baryonyx ate most. Or at least a lot of people think that's what it ate most. It obviously, with the kind of mouth it has, it's got the perfect mouth and just waiting there for predators. Uh, nope, wait, he is the predator. Waiting there for prey, he's in the wall. Man, my brain doesn't work so late at night. This is a late at night recording, can you tell? Uh, for prey, when they swim on by. Yes, when archaeologists are going through this guy's stomach, you know, when they find the fossils, uh, they mostly find a lot of fish in there. But given that there were other uh, plant-eating dinosaurs around at the time, like the Iguanodon, who knows? It could have eaten things like the Iguanodon, but no evidence of that has really been found. A lot of scientists just, they kind of speculate that. But... All we know for certain is that a hunted fish. So maybe not as deadly dangerous as we thought, but I still wouldn't want to run into him in a back alley, honestly. Getting up to 40 feet long and 8,000 pounds, with the those claws on its front hands, which kind of remind me of Velociraptor, you don't survive anything if you manage to encounter this guy, especially, as we mentioned, if you're a fish. All right. We're done with the monsters of the past, as I always love to say. We're leaving them in the past and moving on next to the nightmares of nature. We got a fun one today. Our nightmare of nature today is the hippopotamus. I love the nightmares of nature because you just get to learn about common everyday animals, you know? A lot of these other ones, like the strange wonders or the, or the nightmares of the deep or whatever, they can be about anything, things you don't know anything about. The nightmares of nature, though, those are going to be pretty self-explanatory. The hippopotamus is terrifying, and I think we all are aware of that. Don't ever walk up to a hippopotamus, because although they're vegetarians, uh, they will kill you. <laughs> they are extremely territorial, they agitate easily, and their teeth may not be suited for uh, tearing into like, thick, coarse meat or anything, but they'll definitely impale you, because their bite 
force is extremely strong. Getting up to 11 feet long, four and a half feet tall, and weighing like three and a half tons, hippos are one of the Earth's biggest creatures, land walkers, and you know. Uh, so let's see, four and a half feet, if I were to stand up. Something like this, right? That's pretty tall. <laughs> Imagine if their heads are like this big. Imagine just, you probably can't see my bottom arm at all. But like, uh, you've seen a hippo before. You've been to the zoo. Yeah, hippos actually kill more people a year than crocodiles or lions. They're, they're more likely to walk a bit further of a distance just to angle in on you and attack you. Speaking of angles, by the way, the hippo can open their mouth to a 150 degree angle and their teeth are like freaking 28 inches long. That's over two feet teeth. Again, not the sharpest, but definitely going to impale you. I just want to show you this, this back picture here. And I want to read you. So all weird and wild, hold on. All weird and wild creature cards have this uh, situation they present at the bottom of the card to show you how dangerous these creatures are. I don't know if you can see here though. Let me make just my eyes. Um, and so I want to read you the situation going on here. Hunters who invade a hippo's territory are practically inviting trouble, even, there, even if they're secure in a small boat. When the boat gets too close, a hippo may swim underneath and flip the boat with a thrust of its mighty head. And then we see this final picture here. The hunters are thrown into the water where the angry hippo attacks, inflicting deep wounds with its wide jaws and strong teeth. I don't know if we can get like a zoom in on this or something, but good lord, this man doesn't stand a chance. Hippos are, are terrifying creatures. They're huge and they will not hesitate to attack. Just the thought of it makes me want to leave. Let's go and talk about the toxic terrors. For our toxic terror, we're going to be talking about the saber-toothed ground beetle. Now, obviously, when you first look at this guy and even hear the name, you hear saber tooth and you think, okay, this guy's main deal is his bite. He's got these huge pincers that are gonna close in on you, kill you dead. Well, kill something else dead. I mean, we're a lot bigger than it. But this guy's got two attacks. He doesn't just have the big jaws in the front. He's got a butt shooter in the back. That's right, he spits. Well, not really spits. He farts? Acidic toxins from his butt to attack and defend himself from any predator trying to eat him. So you got the war on two fronts. You got the front and the back. You're not safe either way. And I did mention that these guys probably won't do, be doing you any harm, and that's true. These guys are like two inches long. It, nothing to worry about, really. Just stay away from them. And unless you live in Central or South Africa, staying away from them um, is going to be pretty easy. Yeah, so this dude can't fly, unfortunately, like a lot of its buggy relatives, but it does have pretty long legs that allow it to run quickly and get away from predators that aren't quite so scared of its butt burst. And if it's ever getting too hot out in the African heat, this beetle can just tunnel underground to get away and cool itself off. It digs a series of tunnels in and throughout the ground just to do so. Yeah, there's honestly not too much more to say about this guy, though. His main draw comes from the weapons he has in the front and the artillery he has in the back. So don't mess with this guy if you're like anywhere from the size of a mouse to the size of, I don't know, big lizard. Let's move on now to the monsters of the deep. I think we're going to find something a bit bigger there. All right, I promised you bigger and you're going to get bigger. The monster of the deep today is the Caribbean Reef Shark. Look at this dude. This is just a shark. <sighs> Ain't that nice? Nothing horrible or super unique or special. This is just a shark. And besides the great white shark, when you think shark, I'm sure this is the first guy that comes to mind. Don't be fooled though. The Caribbean reef shark, uh, this card says, it's still one of the most dangerous things patrolling the coral reefs that it lives in. Now I'm sure you know this fact. 
a shark skin isn't like our human skin or anything like that. It's kind of sharp and you can actually cut yourself on it. People have described this skin more like teeth in a way, which is, I feel like, kind of a weird description, but I'm sure you did not know that those little things are called denticles. I sure didn't. The shark has denticles. And it's pronounced like dent... No, it can only be pronounced denticles. There's no way I'm getting that wrong. <laughs> Just, I'd never do it. It doesn't sound right. These guys can get up to 10 feet tall and weigh 155 pounds. So, pretty big. Pretty big. I could, I could probably lift one, though. It's not too bad. Well, not with the back I have, but in my glory days. Yeah, baby. Bench press the shark. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so tired. So a lot of people know, again, that uh, sharks can detect like uh, frequencies and whatnot. Well, apparently the reef shark is specially adapted to hearing low frequencies that most other sharks can't hear. So this guy is not just to have a one-up on us. He has one-up on a lot of other sharks too. Plus I'm sure he's got that whole dealio where he smells blood from like 10 miles away or something. And he's got it. 10 miles is probably a lot actually. I don't know if it stretches that far. Not that I'd ever do this, but honestly, these guys don't really bother larger prey. When I say prey, if they don't consider them, then I, mean, I don't consider them prey because they're not going to bother them. That's why a lot of divers will sometimes sit on the ocean floor and watch the sharks as they feed because the likelihood of one of these Caribbean reef sharks coming for you is very slim. They're no great white or anything, and even they don't particularly go after humans. It's just, you know. They're just a misunderstanding sort of thing. But these guys, they don't even misunderstand. They're just like, hey, dude, what's up? I'm gonna keep eating. When you watch me, it's kind of weird, but I can't do nothing about it. I'm a shark. They can do so much about it if they're a shark. What am I saying? I'm dying. I'm, I'm dying out here. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> these guys are pretty cool, huh? Yeah, they're a normal shark, Caribbean reef shark, but they've got some gumption to them, and that's what matters. We're gonna, we're, we went from small to big, right back to small, because now we're talking about the tiny tear. Our tiny tear today, oh, good alliteration, is the terrestrial flatworm. Very tiny, like I said, and I don't normally do this. Sometimes I'll read you things verbatim. I just did that earlier, but I want to read you this first paragraph verbatim because it's it's got so many good like little like little nuggets and shock moments in it. I, I just want to read it. Flatworms are simple creatures that have mastered the skill of survival. Their slimy bodies are primitive and lack internal organs such as hearts and lungs. I couldn't live without them, but then again, I'm not a flatworm. So, but but here's the big here's the important part. But they can still hunt effectively. They kill prey by drenching them with digestive juices. So these guys have no need for a heart or lungs, but they have a stomach apparently, and they are very good at filling that belly. Sure, why not? Uh, and then the next one's that, you know, that was a one, a good one punch. This is a one, two right here. Plus they're experts in reproduction. I don't know, you know, I didn't do that justice. Plus they're experts at reproduction. Need I say more? <laughs> Ooh, that's good. One flatworm can produce huge numbers of offspring. I'm sold. These guys seem wicked cool. Oh. Oh, I was wrong. These guys are bigger than I expected. They can get up to 20 inches. That's really long. I've only ever seen these guys that like this big. I mean, even if we flip the card around and take a look, He's tiny. He's not a big dude. He's tiny. 20 inches is a lot of inches. 
Because these guys are thin. I know that for a fact. These guys are super thin. So they're not just going to be like 20 inches in thick. Like the thick, juicy boy. No, they're going to be thin and big. So they can like wrap around you like a snake. Ooh, man. Maybe I don't like these guys as much as I thought I did. So the card says that these guys live in any habitat on all seven continents. I feel like you'd be hard pressed to find a flatworm in Antarctica. <laughs> but besides that, these dudes can literally live anywhere. I mean, I guess if they can live anywhere, Antarctica isn't off the table. I just can't imagine like this little wormy guy living in the harsh wintry snow. But hey, I'm not a flatworm. <laughs> I'm, this is hearsay. <laughs> I did mention earlier that these guys are expert hunters and they and they do have a surefire way uh, to make sure their prey never moves again. And that's by crawling onto them, rele releasing their throat from their mouth and like plunging digestive juices into them. And of course, sucking that back up. I'm sorry guys, I gotta do it to you again. I gotta read this verbatim. I don't wanna I don't wanna mess this up. It's from the instant kids section. I think it's behind my back. These slimy creatures also reproduce by laying eggs and can do so without a mate. Okay, sure, there are a lot of animals in, in you know the animal kingdom that can do that. Eggs suddenly break through a flat worm's skin. Just, you know, out of the blue, if, if they're feeling a bit too crazy. Which the worm then fertilizes by itself. Such easy reproduction often results in plagues of flatworms. They are experts at reproduction. <laughs> so much so, they're gonna bring a plague. God sent the plague of locusts. I would have been more terrified of these guys. Well, I'm very glad we talked about the terrestrial flatworm. So why don't we start talking about the strange wonders? Our strange wonder today is the king of camouflage. It's the Maclay's Spectre. Let's hope I pronounced Maclay right. I think I did, but I'm not looking it up. Yeah, that's mainly this guy's whole deal. He's camouflaged so well that even the most alert predators will walk right past him, completely just missing this guy. And, uh, yeah, he's meant to resemble dead leaves and whatnot, and he's good at his job. He's good at his job. These guys can get up to five inches long, weigh up to a little less than an ounce, right at like 0.8 ounces. And they're often found in Australia, Tasmania, New Guinea. So again, nowhere near us, but there are like leaf bugs like this that camouflage themselves all over the world. I know we have some here in Florida and there's some all over the place. We just don't happen to have this one in particular. If these guys are ever threatened, have no fear, the males can fly away. Uh, the females, however, they can't fly. Will this gender inequality ever end? But thankfully, they're good cosplayers because the females can wrap their tails around their heads to make them look like a scorpion. And that normally deters a lot of predators. So, you know, the men can take to the skies, the women are good at being in disguise. I should start writing poetry. <laughs> that was good. When it comes time for the female to lay the eggs, it perches itself up on a tree. The card specifically shows it being upside down. I don't know if it has to be. And she just like shoots the eggs out of her tail and they land on the ground wherever. They are meant to be scattered. A lot of predators end up eating these eggs, but for the ones that do survive, they can be in their eggs for like two years before they hatch. That's such a long time. I didn't know creatures, bugs or not, could, could stay in an egg form for that long. That's a long time. All right, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. I'm going to atone for my mistakes once again, and we're going to talk about what I believe to be the final kid of Typhon. Let's go to the Monsters of the Mind. 
I started talking about Typhon way back in my first Weird and Wild Creatures video. I thought he was so cool. He was one of the standout creatures that I always, you know, remembered from back in the day when I first started getting these things. And then I found out he has kids. He has a wife. And all, well, wife, he has a mother to his children at the very least. And, and it's like, okay, he got these four kids. And I assumed he only had four, because I only had the four cards of Chimera, Sphinx, Cerberus, and the Nemean Lion. I did not have the card for his fifth and hopefully final kid, Orthus. Looks a bit familiar, huh? <laughs> Two-headed dog as opposed to a three-headed dog. Uh, Typhon, your children are getting a bit predictable at this point. Uh, so let's see. Orthus' brother Cerberus guarded the underworld where Hades ruled. All right, that's cool, that's cool. Orthus was a guardian too. Uh, what did he guard? Oh, that's right. Uh, he guarded cattle. Yeah, he protected some cows. You good boy. Uh, no, these were super important prized cattle that a lot of the gods really wanted to get their hands on. One of those gods being Hercules. Oh, this isn't good. Hercules, if memory serves, was responsible for killing Cerberus, the Nemean lion, and I think, if memory serves, the Chimera. The Sphinx, now that was Oedipus, but... Yeah, uh, Hercules and the Typhon family have a bit of a history. Uh, he, uh, spoiler alert, he does kill Orthus. Uh, Hercules needs the cattle. Yeah, Hercules was apparently sent to round up all these cattle and bring them to Tyrings? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that city name right. But, yeah, I don't know who sent him on this mission, but it's obviously somebody who, uh, hated Orthus. Because when Hercules stepped foot onto the island, Orthus sniffed him out immediately, charged at him, and I'm pretty sure it only took one hit from Hercules' mighty club. I don't remember that from a Disney movie, but it's a Disney movie, not actual um, Greek mythology. And yep, one hit, and dead. That's all it took. I hope Cerberus put up a bit more of a fight, but Orthus did not last very long in that fight. It is what it is. He couldn't protect the cows. He definitely gives off, like, younger brother energy. You know, not not as strong as all the others, but, you know. We had to talk about him regardless. I finally have rounded out the Typhon family. The name Orthus actually comes from the Greek word orthos, which means straight. So, at least we know his sexuality. <laughs> It's also said that his original owner might have been Atlas, the god that carried the world on his shoulders. Greek mythology's got a lot going on, man. And listen, I mentioned in the, in the very beginning, there's some confusing family history surrounding this guy, and it's because Orthus's card said that he would go on to be the father of the Sphinx. But I just double-checked the Sphinx's card. It says that she it specifically says, the daughter of Typhon. I don't, I don't get it. You know? So, here's the only thing I can find. I don't know if that's the right word. Uh, Typhon and Echidna had the Sphinx, and then maybe Orthus was the one who fathered it? Which is weird to say, because this is a dog. <laughs> then again, yeah. In Norse mythology, didn't Loki, like, have a horse child with the horse? Yeah, like, like, like. Oh, mythology, man. It's, it's, it's hard to wrap your brain around, but either these cards are just giving me conflicting information, or uh, there was some weird parenting situation going on here. But when it comes to the Typhon family and this like demon snake lord and this like beast headed demon guy freaking can give birth to lions 
human eagle hybrids and dogs, I don't really know what order we can draw from this. But I think I've finally done it. I've talked about the entire Typhon family. At one point, I did plan on making a Weird and Wild Creatures video exclusively about Typhon and his family. I was gonna dig into like uh, articles online and everything and actual Greek mythology to discover all that I could about these guys. But I just, I honestly, I never got around to it. But let me know, please, I need you to let me know. If you want to hear more about the Typhon family, I will do a deep dive. Okay, let me not say deep dive. I, I'm, I've never been much of a good researcher. But I will at least talk more about the Typhon family, about Echidna, about Cerberus, and, and Orthus, and all the others, and give more information on these guys. Because I've, I've never really delved, delved, dived, I've never properly looked into different mythologies, like Greek mythology or Roman. You know, the only thing I know about Norse mythology is from the Marvel movies. So if you guys want to know more about the Typhon family, please let me know. I think it'd be a great spin-off video. Otherwise, I think this has been it. The Typhon family has been covered. And I'm, I'm sad to see him go, but I'm sure we'll get brought up again in the future. But with all that being said, that will do it for today. I love talking about these Weird and Wild Creature cards. And again, I'm sorry it took so long for this video to come out. I, it's just a combination of, of scheduling, different ideas, and me preferring to just take a chill day instead of recording a bigger video like this. So next week's video is gonna be good. I'm looking forward to it. And I hope you're looking forward to it. If you are looking forward to it, subscribe please not many of you are subscribed i especially want to say this in videos like this because i know my weird and wild creatures videos can get hundreds if not thousands of views so please subscribe if you have not already like this video if you did like it uh follow my instagram and facebook let's be frank 2020 and follow my tiktok at let's be frank tiktok and with all that being said once again thank you so very much for watching and if one more thing, if you have anything you want to see me do, any video ideas, anything you want me to talk about, let me know down in the comments below. I've got a whole slate, like over a year's worth of ideas in my little notes app, but if you got anything in particular you'd like to see, please let me know. I'd love to squeeze something in. Until next time!